Hey guys, this is Jacob Circle here, bringing you my first ever tutorial on this channel. Um, this is a tutorial about my uh, Instagram 50 day challenge. If you haven't seen that video, link will be in the description and in the top right corner. So go check that out. Uh, first off, I want to thank this user for leaving me a comment uh, suggesting this tutorial series. If you have any uh, ideas or anything you want me to cover, uh, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Um, but anyway, let's get started. Okay, first things first, you want to check to make sure that you're in Blender uh, 2.83. This is the most recent Blender um, as this video is released. Next thing you want to do is come to the, you want to make sure you're in the layout tab, come down to the movie clip editor, and then open the video that you've shot. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the um, least prime example. I did a lot of camera shaking. It's uh, pretty blurry it shot at 24 fps but um if you're trying to do it for the first time i would recommend doing as small of movements as possible and shooting in a higher frame rate that way you will have an easier time tracking um, but the first thing i want to do is come into this section and then set the resolution to whatever resolution you shot in mine was shot in 4k so i'm going to change it to that resolution and then also make sure that the frame rate is the correct resolution again i'm shooting at 24 but yours might be shot at 30 or 60. Um, next thing you want to do is come over here to set scene frames that'll just set the frame count to whatever uh, amount of frames that are in the video and then you want to hit prefetch prefetch allows the video uh, frames to be stored in the cache and uh, that just makes for an easier viewing experience and it, a faster clip. So as you can see, uh, all my frames are cached. If it wasn't, then this bar would be slightly over um, once you get over to here. So a way you can fix that is by going to edit and then preferences. And then you want to go to the system preferences right here and then go down to the video sequencer section and make sure your cache limit, I would say around half of your RAM. So I have 16 gigs, I set it to eight gigs. Uh, usually it's around, I wanna say four gigs um, uh, at the start. So I, I doubled mine to 8,000. Uh, um, so you wanna make sure to do that because you want all of yours to be prefetched and you can see the video is real stable now. Uh, now what we wanna do is we wanna change some of these settings around right here. Um, so first the motion method um, most people use perspective and affine but for a clip like this I think the best uh, method is to use lock rotation and scale um, Basically you want to use these two if there are minor movements and then this one if there are big movements uh, like this um, Match you, you want to keep on keyframe you can do previous frame But that'll take a lot longer and so for the sake of this tutorial We're gonna keep it on keyframe a pre-pass you leave checked and then normalize I will check that for this tutorial um, biggest thing though is for these tracking settings extra you want to make sure that the correlation is uh, 0.9 it'll make sure that each tracking marker is 90% certain it is correct um, but anyway to get started you want to make sure you're on the first frame and then you can hit this detect features button up here um, what that'll do is it'll detect all these features uh, as you can see right here um, you want to make sure you do this uh, right when you start uh, but go to the detect features section um, if you don't see it like say if I click off of it uh, it won't be down here so you want to make sure you do it the first thing that you do when you hit detect features um, you want to come down here again uh, threshold is the one that we're gonna change whoops didn't mean to do that so threshold, we're gonna to change to a 0.01. That will just give us more markers on the screen. Um, and then all the, the rest you can leave uh, the same. But um, what I like to do is uh, have all these markers here. You wanna increase the size just by a bit. I did that by hitting S and then moving my mouse up. That increase the size by just a tiny amount. And that'll lead to uh, better tracking. So all we wanna do now is we can either go down to this tracking section and hit the track markers button or the hotkey is control T um, and that's what I use uh, and to know that it works you can either see it moving on screen right now or um, there will be a track marker section down here and the percent should be going up um, but as you can see some of the markers are getting tracked but these red markers are tracker markers that were lost uh, which means that the system couldn't get that 90% uh, like certainty it was right so it uh, canceled the tracking for that marker 
um, but if we let it finish up real quick you can see that some markers actually didn't make it out through the whole clip which is really nice those are usually the markers you want to keep the most um, you can see some of them like moving around and stuff and doing weird stuff uh, we can deal with that later but um, yeah so that that was our first one now what you want to do is you want to do the exact same thing again but you want to go to a point where a lot of the markers disappear uh, since this area is not really covered as much as this area we're gonna go ahead and do another section so you want to detect features again and then the settings should have sh uh, been saved from last time the 0.01 so we can keep it like that again uh, hit S and then scale it up a bit and then hit track again um, we just want to keep repeating that step until we have tracker trackers all throughout our clip uh, in a majority of the frame um, so I'll be back once I do that okay so I did that about four or five more times and uh, you should get at the end of the screen to look like this just a bunch of tracking markers uh, don't worry don't get overwhelmed or anything uh, we'll solve this uh, clean it up in a bit but uh, you want to make sure throughout your whole clip you always have markers on screen um, blender will need at least eight per screen but I usually like to get a lot more just to have a better track um, so you should see this and then what we can do is come over to the solve section up here and then go uh, we want to hit keyframe because it'll choose both this A and B. Uh, we want to let that computer figure it out because it'll tell us what what section of the video will have the most uh, the most movement, and so it'll make the hardest tracking spots. And so we want the computer to know that. Um, we want to refine. Uh, I usually like to do the local length, uh, fo uh, sorry, fo focal length, K1 and K2. Uh, you can do the optical center as well, except as I'm shooting in an iPhone, uh, I just want the K1 and K2 and focal length. And then after we do that, we can just hit solve motion. And uh, since we did hit the keyframe uh, option, it'll say selecting keyframes. Now, uh, this process usually with a scene like this will take about five to 10 minutes. Um, once it's done, you should see a solve error um, up here in the corner, and that's when you'll know it's done. You can also come down here and see the percent that it will take. Okay, so we just got our solve error that took around three minutes. So uh, it highly depends on what hardware you're using. Um, but as you can see, there's a solve area of 4.97. Um, we want to try to get that as low as possible. I usually try to aim for 0.7. Um, so we definitely need to do something about this. Uh, the easiest way that I found is that you can actually go over here to the cleanup section um, and then hit clean tracks. Uh, you want to make sure you're, uh, you don't have anything selected first. So I usually like click up here. Uh, so again, go to clean tracks and then here we can either do track frames so the max amount of track frames that uh, will get deleted I usually don't mess with that I like to uh, mess with this uh, reprojection error and so I uh, that is basically just the solve error of each individual uh, tracking marker um, but I usually like to go around double what the uh, um, the solve areas at first so all we can do is have all those selected and then hit delete no delete the track um, and then now after we've deleted all those tracks we can hit solve camera motion again and it should give us another error okay I just got my second solve error and as you can see just by doing that we are already down at point nine so uh, definitely do do that it's an easy way to get your error um, down but one thing I forgot to tell you guys before is you uh, after you do the first uh, solve error you want to uncheck this keyframe box that'll save you a lot of time just down the road and there's no really need for it um, but again you're gonna want to uh, go to clean tracks usually still I do double um, but if you get here and there's not really that much, I usually come down a little bit more and just try to get a little more. Um, and then again, delete, and then solve the camera motion again. Okay, I cleaned the tracks uh, two more times and was able to get the solve error down to uh, 0.49, so basically 0.5. So that's, I think, a really good uh, error to get. Of course, if you're doing something like bigger budget or something, you want to try to get that, I would say around the 0.2 or 0.3 just to get that extra bit of like precision. But uh, once we're here, 
we can actually go ahead and drag a new scene down. I usually like to um, just see what this is going to look like in the 3D viewport. And so now that we have our solver and everything, we can come all the way down and then set up tracking scene. Um, so that'll set up a tracking scene right here. Um, let me actually turn on the keys that I press just so you guys can see um, right here. Um, so once we have that, we can actually go in the camera view and see that we have our um, background plate and video on the camera um, itself. So what we actually want to do is we want to go to the camera up here. I usually like to come down to this camera section, go to background images, and then make the alpha uh, one. That'll make this non-transparent so we can see the whole thing. But as you can see, it's a little wonky looking. Um, it, if we move the timer right around, around and stuff, it will still track the motion. But as you can see, it's not the way we want it. So we want to change some, uh, uh, some more things in here. So um, first off, you want to see where you want to place your object in the scene uh, and you want to find that point down here. You want to make sure it's a point that's tracked. So you can see this is the point that's tracked right here. Um, and that's where I want to place my object. So I'm going to hit that and then hit set origin. Um, automatically that sets the origin uh, of that point to there. Um, so now we want to uh, make the box smaller, but instead of just making the size smaller up here, we can actually if I select that point and then let's say this point, uh, come over here to the set scale and we're going to set scale right there. It made it a little bit smaller, but I want it a little more uh, smaller. So I'm going to set it to, I think five is a good spot. Let's see how that looks. Um, a little too small. So I would say let's do half of that 2.5. That looks good enough. And as you can see, it made the scale uh, smaller. So now what we want to do is actually get the, uh, the object to be on the same plane as our ground in the video. Uh, so what, what we can do with that is uh, select, you want to select three points that are going to be on the ground. So I'm going to select again this point, this point, and then this point right here. Those three are all on the ground. And then hit uh, this floor button right here. Automatically that sets the floor and it is looking really good. Sometimes it'll be finicky. So uh, you want to try many different uh, floor spots. Uh, but that looks really good right there. Again, you just need to select uh, three points that are on the floor. Uh, it should work most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so now, now that we have it uh, the way we want it, we can actually, um, you, usually I like to set the rotation. So what we can do then is uh, if this is the origin point right here, then I want this, let's see. I want to see this point right here. Where is that? There, that's the point. And then I can set that as either the X or Y axis. I usually like to set the Y axis like that. And that way we kind of have the horizon going with kind of like these lines right here. Um, and then you can just, uh, I like to scale this up just to get the shadow. And then you want to come to um, the side view and then just scale that up. Uh, so it's sitting on this floor right here. And then if we, I just want to hide the floor real quick to see if I have the tracking correct. If we uh, play through the tracking, it's going to be slower just because it is 4K footage and it's not prefetched. But as you can see, um, this roughly follows the outline of the camera. It uh, correctly pans and zooms and all that stuff. Um, so it's looking really good. Um, nothing really too uh, eye-catching right there. So we can actually go ahead and close this by right clicking the side and then join the areas right there and now we have this in full screen mode and with that we are finally done with the motion tracking part of this tutorial series the video will be on screen of the uh, just the motion tracking in the part two we will cover um, the lighting and also how to make the scene look more realistic and stuff the final uh, video is already posted to my Instagram uh, it's on the screen right now and also in the description below along with my other social media so definitely go that check that out that's where I post my finalized stuff uh, usually before I finish a tutorial so if you want to see the final so please go check that out um, but anyway guys again if you want to send me uh, tutorial suggestions down in the comments I'd love to hear them and love to help you guys out but anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later peace